All right. We uh, we have uh, our extra coats of paint color, base color, on the box, and we've got it sanded. We wet sanded it. Uh, with this particular paint that I'm using here, uh, we wet sanded it with 600, and which is going to be plenty, plenty good enough for uh, for this old truck. And uh, so we, you can see that we've got it pretty, pretty good, and uh, we've uh, right now we've got some, we've had some pretty heavy rain. And it's going to rain for the next five days, I guess they said, uh, predicted here. And uh, my old paint booth here uh, hasn't been uh, the best water tight uh, situation that we've had. So what I did is we got this heavyweight plastic here and uh, we slid it in between our frame rails here of the paint booth and covered the pretty much the whole roof area so that's going to fix our our leakage it didn't leak a lot it's just uh it's an old uh it's an old uh, uh portable garage or whatever you want to call it and uh, it's just, it was the, the canvas or the uh, tarp was getting thin. And so what happened is, it happens is uh, it just seeps. So anyway, so uh, with this, that being said, what we've got here now is, uh, should be a fairly, uh, fairly watertight situation where now uh, we can concentrate on uh, getting the, the clear, the pearl laid on this base coat and uh, and start moving on. Uh, otherwise, we're going to be another week uh, waiting for uh, conditions to clear up. Uh, the biggest factor that we have now is uh, the humidity. We're up around a 70% humidity, uh, and that's high for this area, really high. So we're in the processes of uh, checking now to see what, uh, how to mix and how to, how to spray in that kind of humidity. So uh, once we get that checked out, and uh, this is the door, uh, we just got it covered up to keep uh, dust and stuff like that as I do body work off from, uh, off from it. Uh, that's all prepped. That's ready to go also. So when we spray the box, we'll be spraying uh, this independently from the box. Um, we're not going to spray them at the same time. Reason being is it's a lacquer clear that we're spraying and it will dry in the air relatively quickly. So what I don't want is overspray. Uh, so we're just going to paint one unit at a time. We'll paint this, get it done, get it out of here, and then we'll spray the door, get it done, get that out of here. Then we can bring the truck in, the truck itself, and, uh, and finish our body work on the cab and, uh, get that uh, primered and then base coated and uh, we'll paint that independently from the box again and uh, once that's painted then we'll mount the box we'll mount the doors independently uh, we still have to fix the one door that's on the back of the truck the third door still got some body work to do but um, at least we'll be moving on here all right, and uh, we should be should be moving on and uh, getting going. Okay, all right, we're gonna mix up some clear.
as you can see, it's magic clear coat. So it's a high gloss lacquer. This by itself is all you need. You don't put no catalyst in this. Just making sure that it's mixed up from sitting on the bench. What I do with this, this is just a, a cup. I mark onto it how much paint I want to put into it. This has been measured. This is, uh, this is one pint that we're going to put in here. I know I can buy the, the cups that have already got the measuring thing on to them and stuff, but we use, uh, we use the product that comes in this, so why not use the cup afterwards? It's nice and clean. That's up to the mark. Make sure our holes are open here. paint with pearl. This is a uh, platinum silver pearl pigment. So this particular one pint, this is a quarter teaspoon, and one pint takes a half a teaspoon. we're painting this right now it's about 65 uh, degrees of humidity or percentages they really like to have you 50 percent of humidity and lower I had some properly mixed Thinner or uh, lack of frying clear. So we're going to take and add that to this because it already has the pearl in it. mix this up to do our test powder. So I don't really want to waste it. And since there's no catalyst in this, you can uh, 
it can be saved. And since it's a powder, it just not that it's horribly hard to uh, mix up. It's just you want to make sure that it's very, very well mixed. Apologize for all the fans running. Whenever you're mixing paint, you really should have the fans going. Or have the proper paint mask on. And when you do paint, make sure the mask that you have has the proper filters onto it for the type of paint that you're painting. Not all filters are the same. Look at your data sheets on the material that you're spraying. See what material, what, what chemicals are in it. And then make sure that the mask that you buy has the filters onto it that will filter out those type of material. All right. The, uh, the gun that I'm going to be using here today is uh, is one that's distributed by Mac Tool. Uh, it's uh, it's obviously a, a copy of one of the big big names. I think Sato. I also have a Sato, and uh, but I really like the spray pattern for whatever reason on this particular gun for spraying clear. I've done a bunch of experimentations with it. All right. We're basically mixed up. I'll mix it up again before I actually pour it into the cup. <coughs> and uh, this is a disposable cup that we use. And uh, the cleanup is very easy. We're going to be spraying this at around 20 pounds of pressure. And we'll see how it goes. What we're going to do now is uh, make sure that uh, all the fingerprints, etc., are off on it from standing and, and touching it and stuff like that. Um, we take in uh, from now on. We won't be uh, we won't touch this with our hands. Everything will have, will have gloves on. And uh, that way we won't contaminate the surface once we, once we get it all cleaned up. What I use, I've had good luck with. It's uh, Martin Sinor uh, 6383. It's Cleanse Easy. It's a surface cleaner. A lot of people put these in a spray bottle. Probably wouldn't be easy. Might waste a lot. But I've always had good luck doing it this way. So.
clean and cleaning that the body will get before it has its finished coat put on. Whatever's in it now will, will be in it. This is a brand new uh, microfiber towel. And I do be, I only use a brand new one. I never, never use a one that's been used for anything else. new gas store, so I don't have to worry too much about having any petroleum product on it. done here with a clear coat. One of the last things we'll do for a steam coat. Obviously we have to fix the inside of the box yet. But as far as the steam goes, we will be in, we'll be putting a, a rock card material on the bottom edges. Help preserve the paint. We do live on a in the country here on dirt roads. We travel a lot of a lot of dirt roads, a lot of snow plowing, that kind of thing. So hopefully you can hear me over the fan. I got one blowing in the front just to kind of keep the humidity down a little bit. The next thing we'll do is prepare the paint booth. Because uh, unfortunately I do have a dirt floor. So we have to prep for that. As you can see, what I've done is I wet the floor to keep the dust down. I lay out these uh, little tarps on either side so that I can kneel down without getting dirt on myself and uh, I'll close that door up and uh, and just leave a small space for air. Unfortunately it's unfiltered air. I don't have a filter built for this but uh, so far I've been knock on wood pretty lucky. All right, our next step is uh, we'll start shutting the doors and uh, then we will tack rag and uh, the body. All right, as you can see, we've got the doors are down and now I'm going to tack rag the body and get off any dust. May have landed on it. Possibly. 
they get raised by the by the spray of the paint. Anybody out there that wants to lose weight needs to come inside this paint booth right at the moment. Our temperature right now is almost 90 degrees, which will affect how I spray. The good part about it being 90 degrees in here is that after it's all sprayed, it's like an oven. You bake it. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. So, unfortunately, I can't film while I'm spraying because the camera will get covered up with overspray. So, we'll catch you on the other side. I don't think it came out too awful bad. We replaced this wheel well on this side. Both of the struts were rusted through. So we replaced metal in both at both sides there. Replaced the gas cap. And uh, on this side, we replaced this. And if you've been watching my videos, we had to replace a big hole here that was rusted out. And of course, both of the struts were rusted out on the bottom.